Welcome everyone, Fred Gleek here with Bill DeWeese and tonight or today, whenever you're listening to this, it's for you if you're in the teaching profession because we specifically want to address that, right Bill? Yes, um, I'm a former teacher myself and um, if you are involved in any kind of teaching, coaching, mentoring, it doesn't have to be an academic environment. Teachers come in all from all types of different environments. Uh, I think you'll find out that you have a pretty handy skill set already in place that will help you into voiceover. Perfect. And your questions will come later after uh, Bill goes through a little bit of the presentation. So don't worry. Plenty of time for questions at the end. Thanks, Bill. All right. Well, are we, uh, is it time? We're, we're, not, we're not quite, I guess. Let's oh, get okay, okay. We can... And uh, okay. let's see here. If we've got people, uh, Jennifer checking in, we've got people from all over the place, quite a few people. And so we're going to wait till the top of the hour here and then you know, get started. Uh, what well, we you know what we could do in the meantime is just to get started. You could just yeah say your name, where you're from, and what your teaching background is. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be a long, just a yeah, just a few words. Yeah, what is your teaching background? If you're on this webinar, we're interested to see what your background is from a teaching perspective. If you want to put that in the question box, I will be a retired minister. Joe says, okay. Ah, yeah, well, very good. Well, <laughs> then you may have to be on the next webinar as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. Corporate uh, sales trainer. Okay, Richard, I did that a little bit myself. Taught people how to be a chef, David. I like that. You can oh, wow, there. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, current seven to twelve, seven to twelfth grade social studies teacher from Kansas. Uh, Cheryl from Canada, not a teacher, but was customer service coach for a call center. That qualifies definitely. Absolutely. Uh, Army trainer, corporate trainer. There you go. Oh, nice. Uh, taught some uh, corporate technical training. Charles says. Retired music teacher also makes perfect sense. From Germany, he's a dance or he uh, Henning. He's a dance instructor, uh, musician, and guitar teacher. Joel, uh, gotcha. Okay. Corporate IT training. Yeah, all kinds of people. Really appreciate it. karate sensei. I like that. Luke, mm -hmm. uh, there we go. Substitute teacher Chuck, uh, Tom. I can't get to all these folks. I apologize. Robin Berry, band director. Hey, Robin. <laughs> So there you go. Lots of different people. And again, I'm sorry if I couldn't get to you because I'll let Bill get started because there's a lot there's a lot of good material. Go ahead, Bill. All right. Well, welcome. We're so glad to have you have you here. And again, welcome to Teacher to Voice Talent. And there's a very specific reason that I'm doing this. You know, it's interesting when I got involved in voiceover, which I'll talk more about in just a moment. I had no idea that my previous experiences would translate so so strongly and so well into voiceover and teaching. Uh, my goodness, uh, most of most of what I do today, I can look back to my teaching career and realize that I'm using those skills. So I want to talk about that and also give you some information that will help you as you think about possibly whether it's transitioning into a full time career as a voiceover or as a supplemental, um, you know, as, as a side gig, as a side hustle, as they say. And just to give you a sense of where I'm coming from and why I'm talking about this, uh, my background and I'll, I've done quite a few things, but I'll make this very brief. Uh, I really started off in broadcasting and radio. And um, though I've had just about every position known to man within a radio station, uh, I spent most of my career as a, a program director, which means that I was in charge of hiring and developing talent. And so that's really where my teaching career began, helping um, you know men and women understand what it means to communicate and connect with an audience uh, over a broadcast medium. I did that for about 11 years, and then I uh, ended up uh, going into academia. Actually, I taught at a a small private university here in the Chicago area, Olivet Nazarene University. Came here in 91, and uh, it was kind of a dual role. They had a, a FM radio station um, that they broadcast to the Chicagoland area with, and I managed that station, but I also taught, I carried a, a half load uh, of undergrad, um, uh, of undergrad work, teaching undergrads uh, communication primarily, communication-based courses and broadcast-based courses, but also I had an MBA, and uh, would teach in the evening and moonlight in the MBA program where I taught uh, marketing management and organizational behavior and all kinds of classes actually in the MBA program. And then uh, left that in about 2005 and spent uh, a short while working for a business consulting firm um, just outside of Chicago in Buffalo Grove where I would meet and talk with and help to coach business owners. And then uh, spent some time in corporate instructional design where we would help um, Fortune 500 companies build high-performance learning environment. 
And actually, during that time, I was working on my PhD in education with a emphasis in um, in training and performance improvement. And uh, the company I was working for went out of business. And this is 2006. I was 46 years old. And uh, at that point in time, I, I figured I would I would take a leap. Well, actually, the leap had already been taken for me. And sometimes we get really brave, you know, when the bur- when the bridge is burning <laughs> when the bridge is burning behind us. And so I decided to pr- pursue something I'd thought about for a long time, but frankly, I didn't I didn't know if I had the right stuff. And that was to be a voiceover talent. Well, I started in 2006, and 14 years later, I have recorded thousands and thousands and thousands of project pr- projects, most of which are educational in nature, which brings us to this this webinar. And I've done projects for uh, recording educational materials for highlights for children, uh, for also National Geographic to be used in middle school settings. But also do, I do a, a lot of corporate work and everybody from BMW to Microsoft and, and just about, I, sometimes I feel like I've worked at some point for every Fortune 500 company. And that's really not much of an exaggeration, if an exaggeration at all. And here's the, you know, here's the crazy twist. I never considered that my extensive background in education would be such a huge plus. I really had, I had no idea. And I wanted to share with you why uh, I can see from my experience and understand that having a background in teaching, and by teaching, I don't necessarily just mean a formal academic environment. It could be, as we heard some of you tonight, corporate work or, or pastors, you know, in a religious setting, or it could be any number of things. But if you've coached or mentored or helped people to to learn and to understand concepts, Um, voiceover could be a great option for you. First of all, there is more content. There is more educational content being created today than ever before. Uh, I remember e-learning was a new thing, like at the end of the 1990s, transitioning into, into the new decade. Uh, you know, the idea of learning management systems and e-learning was, uh, was a relatively you know, new concept. But what has happened over time, and you guys all know this, is that the content is so much easier to create, especially video content. It used to be extremely cost prohibitive for companies to create um, you know, internal training. Uh, and if you weren't a big company, you probably didn't have internal training, at least media created. But nowadays, it's cheap. Everybody can create it. So they do. And therefore, that drives demand for voiceover work. If it wasn't for technology, I wouldn't have had the opportunities that I have, nor would you have the opportunities that now you're being presented with. Um, the other thing is, you know, you relate to the audience. Uh, you, you've you've been through their life experience. You know, you didn't just fall off the turnip truck. And so you know what it's like to teach and coach and mentor. You know, you've been there, done that. Uh, you even, you know, I'm speaking in broad general, generalities, and maybe I should speak more of myself. But, you know, when people hear my voice, they can relate to it because again they can they can tell and sense that i've i've been there done that and that i'm not just you know like i said just fall off the turnip truck and that's those of us who have taught and have that life experience that's something that we bring to the table that clients love to have the vast majority of voiceovers are instructional content a lot of people are very surprised to hear that i'm often asked well what type of voiceover work do you do i do all kinds of voiceover work i do voices for video games i do uh, commercials. I do promos for TV and radio, uh, lots of commercials. But the thing that I do more than anything else, I would say 75% of my workload is instructional in nature. And uh, the reason that I do so much of that is not just because my background is in teaching, but it's because that's what the content is. My, my point is that is the bulk of the content being created is instructional in nature. So if you have a background in teaching and instructing, then this can make you, you know, a really good fit to do. There's children's material, which I mentioned just a few moments ago. Uh, there's a lot of healthcare and pharma. Oh my goodness, I think I've worked for just about every pharmaceutical company in the world in creating training materials um, for their people, you know, introducing new products and doing sales training. Uh, there's also industrial and manufacturing, uh, you know, how to operate machinery, safety training. Oh my goodness, there's lots of safety training environmental health and safety you know, departments crank out vast amounts of this kind of training, which have to be created. And of course, voice has to be put to sales training in just about every industry imaginable, uh, HR related training. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm in the midst of what I call open enrollment season. And it's open enrollment season, season for me because uh, many companies now are doing 
the thing where they you know, open enrollment, where they allow their employees to, to re-up or sign up for benefits, decide what kind of benefits or extra you know, insurance uh, products that they want from their company. And this is the season for that, but there's, there's training being created in bulk. And just today, well, let me throw some numbers out there. Um, last week, I made uh, $12,000 recording voiceovers. Uh, to be exact, it was like $11,963, but very, very close. The, the vast majority of that was cor internal corporate HR, open enrollment. Uh, just today, uh, well, this week I've recorded nearly $7,000 already on Wednesday, about $2,000 today, and I recorded a number of open enrollment projects. And my point is this, I'm not throwing around numbers to impress you. I'm saying I want to impress you with the fact that there is a lot, there's a lot of corporate training material out there to be, uh, to be recorded. Um, some more reasons why voiceover can be a great option for a teacher or a coach or a mentor. You understand how to connect with an audience. You know what it means to communicate. You understand the role of emotion in communication, that it's not just you know, connecting with the head, but it's connecting with the heart, giving people a reason to listen and to pay attention, helping them to, helping them to understand uh, what it means to them. Obviously, somebody else is giving you the words, but you have the intent. You understand what's going on and can communicate effectively. Um, Many of you come from backgrounds in industrial, you know, industrial background manufacturing or safety or a background in sales or human relations. So uh, or human resources, I mean. So not only is the content being created, but you've lived this, you know, much of it. And by the way, you don't have to be an expert in all of these genres to do this work. I have never worked in the pharmaceutical industry. I have never worked in an industrial setting. Uh, I've never worked in human resources, but I have recorded hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of hours of content of which I did not understand the content, but I understood how to talk to the audience. Again, I didn't understand the content, didn't have to, don't have to be a subject matter expert, but I understood, which you do as well, how to connect and communicate with the audience. Now, here's the number one reason clients like talent with real world experience like us is that we understand customer service. And this is just a matter of having, again, been there and done that. We understand that clients like how clients like to be treated and clients don't like flaky talent. And this is, I'm using their language. I often ask my clients, well, you know, why do you work with me? I love to know why clients think the way they do. It helps me in my marketing efforts. And the, the uh, phrase that I've heard more often than not when it comes to clients talking about why they like to work with certain voice talent is they don't like working with flaky talent. So it's not always a matter of them saying it was as a matter of fact, usually they're not saying, well, Bill, you have a great voice. You know, you're so talented. What they say is, hey, you get stuff done. You know, we can count on you when you set a deadline, you do it and you get it done. So having disciplines in place, which being a teacher, you most likely do. You understand how to get things done that you commit to being, you know, to getting done and clients absolutely love that. And when you can deliver, you can repeat, um, you get repeat clients and create a really strong customer base. I wanted to take, uh, I want to turn a corner here just for a moment and share with you a little bit from a performance standpoint to help you understand really what it takes to develop um, as a, communi a voiceover communicator because many people mistakenly think that it's about your voice. In other words, um, they think it's because they have a good voice or that they need a good voice. And then they become overly obsessed on their voice because they think the better they sound, the more clients that they'll get. And that is actually just the opposite. Clients really could care less what you sound like. They may use language like, hey, you sound great. We love you. But what they mean by that is you connect. I believe you when you speak. I believe you when you speak. And that's what it's all about as a voiceover talent. So how do you get to the place of believability and getting beyond what you sound like? Because again, the vast majority of people that don't have a background in voiceover, they see voiceover as standing on a stage in front of a curtain, in front of a microphone, projecting to the back of the, uh, to the, back of the room as performing a script. But that's not how to get work in voiceover. Here's how listeners must perceive you as a communicator. As somebody who's not up front doing the song and dance, the you know the uh, the dog and pony routine, they want somebody who understands what it is the story they're telling. Imagine yourself not being in front of the, the curtain, but behind the curtain, 
being able to watch a video presentation that your audience is. But instead of upstaging the video, you're explaining it to people as they listen. It's a completely different dynamic. And as teachers and as communicators, that's something that we all have experience with. And that's what clients are looking for. Somebody who they want you, they want to perceive that you understand and that you're speaking with them and their audience one on one. And again, that's something as a teacher that you understand. Um, let's talk a little bit about what you need to get started in voiceover. And thankfully, it's not as much as you may think. You do need to have a basic skill set when it comes to computers. And my guess is most of you already do. And when I say basic skill set, what I mean is if you own a computer, a Windows computer or a Mac computer, you understand things like how to operate a word processor, uh, maybe a, a spreadsheet, but probably don't even know how to you know, need to, to do that. But you understand what it means to get on the Internet, to operate a browser. So if you can operate a browser, you understand how to get on the Internet and um, you can use like Microsoft Word. Those are the kind of basic computer skills that I'm talking about. Uh, beyond that, learning how to record and edit audio. That's something that most people don't learn to do throughout the course of their, you know, of their life, unless they're looking to get into audio specifically. So most of you probably come with basic computer skills, but you may not come with audio recording and editing skills. But the good news is that can be learned. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a coaching group that, you know, I, I take from zero knowledge and help them to understand the basics of recording and editing. Uh, as a matter of fact, I didn't learn computer uh, recording and editing until, I, I mean, I was in my 40s um, at the time. And I, I'll never forget, I was terrified when I was fir first, put, first put in front of a computer to record and edit audio. Um, it was a whole brand new thing to me. But within a few weeks, I was up and running. So that is something that, that can be learned. I just want to put your mind at ease there. The other thing is learning some basic marketing skills. And again, these are, what I do is not complicated. Um, I mean, I have a background in marketing and I understand business, but what I do is not a convoluted, complicated, sophisticated system. The things that I do and that I teach my students to do are very straightforward. They're very easy to understand. They're not complicated by any stretch of the imagination, but most importantly, they work. So those, these things can be taught and they can be learned relatively easily. The other is the performance skills. And uh, again, can be learned as well. Usually it, it revolves around the idea of me helping you understand that you're more than a voice. You're a person with experience and with an opinion and with a point of view and uh, learning how to connect with an audience one-to-one. -one. So those are the basic things that you'll need to have or need to learn. The other thing is some, some equipment for a home studio. Now, home studio today, you know, it used to be back in the day, you know, I remember back when I was first thinking about voiceover a number of years ago, um, you know, the pros talking about having to invest like $50,000 to have a good home studio. It was a whole different ballgame. Today, with the, with the advancements of technology and computerization, uh, what you're looking at is basically what I started with. I operated out of my home closet for four years in the bedroom. Successfully, by the way, I built a six-figure business operating out of my bedroom closet. Um, and I used just a basic Windows desktop, desktop computer. You're looking at a notebook computer right there on the screen, which that'll work and it really doesn't matter, notebook or desktop. And what we have now that I didn't have back then is what you see here, and that's a USB microphone. A USB microphone allows you to plug directly into the computer without an interface, without a mic preamp. If you don't know what that is, you don't need to know, don't worry about it. The point of this is that it's a pretty simple setup. Microphone into a computer and um, you know maybe some earbuds or, or headphones so you can listen to your audio back to edit it, but that's about it. So it doesn't require anything terribly complicated. As a matter of fact, that, that uh, microphone that you're looking at, you can buy on Amazon for 49 bucks. I own one and it works really, really well. And I can give you the specifics on that in just a bit if you're interested in knowing. Okay, so, if you're thinking about getting into voiceover, if you're thinking, yeah, okay, my I believe you, Bill, my experience means something. The, uh, the industry is growing and educational content, instructional content is growing. There's opportunity. It's really a matter of, you know, how much time can you spend? And the beautiful thing is whether it's an hour a day or even a half hour a day, or whether you, like me, you know, you lost your job and, you, and you've got 40 hours a week, you can fit you can fit voiceover in to whatever your schedule will allow. Um, let me just give you an example. 
my daughter, Mallory, um, she works for me full time in that she she runs my my voiceover office. She does all the billing and uh, handles receivables and communication with clients. And she edits a lot of my audio for my big, big projects. And um, but she decided that she would record voiceovers on a part time basis. And she does that. And uh, she really started in earnest this year, 2019. And uh, she will make, I believe it'll be somewhere like between 50 and $60,000 this year um, on a part-time basis, maybe like 10, 15 hours a week. Now, I'm not saying in your first year working 10 hours a week, you're going to make 60,000 bucks the first year. That's, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just sharing with you. Of course, she has the benefit. She's with me. So I'm able to kind of instruct her. So, you know, if, of course, if you're part of my coaching group, you're a student, you're going to have the benefit benefit of that as well. But the point is, you don't have to work 30, 40, 50, 60 hours a week to make a decent amount of money. You know, that's at 10 hours a week. And we've got, I've got multiple students who make six figures who do this now on a full-time basis. So again, whether it's a few hours a week or whether it's a full-time effort, you can certainly make a full-time income in voiceover. So I just want to make sure you understood that as well. And Fred, I think at this point would be a good time, maybe, unless if there's some things that you think I should cover that I haven't covered yet, great, or we can open up for some questions. Well, I, I think that it might also be wise, again, to remind people that it really can be done part-time, like you're saying, whether you have five to 10 hours a week, 20 hours a week, it, the, the beauty about voice work is that can, it can kind of fit with whatever schedule you have. And as yeah. a teacher, regardless of what kind of teaching you do, uh, I'm sure you can probably figure out a way to carve out 10 hours a week. I just spoke to someone today who uh, is in the teaching field and is looking to retire. He has a, he actually has built a five-year window. And he says, but I said, oh. realistically, how many hours a week do you have? He said, Fred, realistically, seven to 10. I said, no problem. If you've got a four to five year off ramp, you can make this become a full-time income. Why don't you elaborate on what, what you think I was saying? Yeah, the, you know, the, the point is, and here I often tell people there's 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 power in, in five minutes. And people say, I don't have time. Well, what do you do for lunch? You know, I take a, you know, I, for 30 minutes, I sit down and have a sandwich. Can you, you know, can you send a few emails during that time? Can you take 15, 20 minutes when you get home in the evening? Uh, you know, what Fred is saying is that this, you build this with momentum. It doesn't happen in one week. You're not going to build a full-time career in a month. But if you can put, really like my daughter did, you know, put in some time every week and you do it consistently. And that's the key. You've got to do it consistently. Uh, you can amaze yourself. Some people do it faster than others. Uh, but the point is, if you can consistently invest a little time, again, whether it's 30 minutes a day or an hour a day, you can realistically build a full-time income over with a little bit of time. Sounds good. Should I open it up for questions then, Bill? Yeah, I would love to. Yeah. Okay. Um, a couple here, I see that um, F, uh, I, I don't know what this name is, but technical question, are closed back headphones needed so that sound doesn't, quote, leak back into the microphone while monitoring, while recording? You mentioned earbuds. No. Don't those leak sound? No. Yeah, no, I, I'm not using closed back headphones. Mine are open air. They're lightweight. They're comfortable. You don't need closed back. There you go. So Yvette is asking... Do you, remember, do you recommend websites like Mandy for those who are looking to start off in VO? Well, we we have a lot of things we recommend for people starting off, but what about Mandy, Phil? Yeah, you know, Mandy has changed over the years. I, here's the thing. I'll tell you what's easier than Mandy is just to go to wait, Google. Wait, wait, wait. What is Mandy for those who don't know? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Mandy.com is a database of uh, of video production companies. That's all it is. It's just a big database. And you can just as easily as find those companies by Googling the term video production company. There's tens of thousands of them out there. There's no lack of them. Okay. Um, this question from Luke, I'm going to, I'm going to change a little bit. And basically he's, uh, he's kind of wondering about a specific area of voice work uh, relating to anime or video game work. Mm -hmm. And it really brings up the bigger question of, do you select a niche in advance or does a niche select you? Yeah. Uh, uh, you have to allow the niche to select you. Uh, because what happens is most of the companies out there that create the content do multiple genres of, you know, there's, there are different niches. It could be, for instance, one production house may do TV commercials. They may do uh, instructional design, um, you know, maybe within a corporate environment. Uh, it could be industrial, it could be human resources. They may create explainer videos. I mean, they, they do it all. Uh, or they may be involved in, you know, video game production. So 
uh, what you do is you you market yourself to the people, these production houses broadly, very broadly, and then allow them to choose what they like about you. And that that's how I've done everything I've done. I I never set out to do video games. That was never on my agenda. You now, know, I Bill, didn't set out. Let, let me interrupt you to say you when you said the them in that statement, not them, the video producers, but the video producers' clients, allowing them to select, right? Yes. Well, it's really, I mean, it could be a combination. For instance, if I, if I market to a video production company and they like me, what they'll do uh, oftentimes is then um, they'll present a couple of their talent to their end client and, and make suggestions. So, but, but the point is I'm allowing them to decide how they think they can best use me. Yeah. And it's, well, whether it's either the end client or the video producer, which is kind of the intermediary. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Okay, so Cheryl says, um, and, and Cheryl, this is a question we get asked a lot in, uh, in our Blueprint group that Bill will mention at some point. Uh, she says or asks, can you please touch on the best way to find and approach companies in an effort to do their training VO? Well, again, I, I would never encourage somebody to approach a specific genre. So in other words, I've, I do tons of training, but I don't approach companies with the idea that I want to do training for them. What I do is I reach out to a production house and I say, my name is Bill DeWeese. I'm a, I'm a voiceover talent. And are you currently accepting voiceover demos? That's my entire pitch. That's my approach. And they almost always say, sure, we'll listen to it. And then I let them listen to it. And then they decide how they can best use me. And David's got a good question because we answer this one for people all the time. David asks, are audiobooks a good start or is it better to avoid them? Oh, no, they're great. It's one of the, it's, it's the low hanging fruit. It's also the, on the lower end of the pay scale, but it's just like any other career. You don't start off at the top. You start off at the bottom and you work your way up and audiobooks are a great base, a great way to get started. Excellent. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is, this can't, this, I like this. It's a very general question. How do you recommend finding work? Well, you know, kind of going back to what we were just saying a few moments ago, it's really, uh, I primarily focus on video content producers and I reach out to them and I ask if they're accepting demos. And that's, that's one of the big ways to get work. Of course, there are online platforms. There's acx.com, which is especially for audiobooks. There's fiverr.com, which is, I think, the best freelance website to get started with. There are uh, voiceover platforms, what we call pay to play, where you pay to be on there to get opportunities like voices.com and voice one, two, three. So there's not one answer to that question. And that's I call it the 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 spokes of the marketing wheel. There's a number of spokes out there that can be uh, utilized. And Bill, you may want to jump in and tell people, yes, there are places like voices.com and voice one, two, three, where you can pay a fee and become a listed voiceover talent. The problem is that we found is that people, a lot of times in our coaching group, have made the mistake of getting in there too early. Why don't you explain how that progression works? You know, again, let's think of it, if you were uh, a major league baseball player, um, we've used this analogy a number of times. One of the worst things that could happen if you come out of high school or college is that you could be thrown into the starting lineup of a major league baseball team because there's development that needs to happen and it's going to be very tough for you to compete for a spot to play. You need to play in the minor leagues for a while. And so with voiceover, it's the same thing. And when you jump into these big pay to play platforms, voices.com, voice one, two, three, they're extremely competitive. And there are things, there's a whole thing. There's, there's like three or four things you need to understand. Your audio has to be pristine. Your audition skills have to be strong. You need a professional demo and you need to understand the platform. Usually nobody has any of these things going when they first get started. These things are, they have to be learned and, and, you know, the audio has to be worked with and your talents have to be developed, you know, so on and so forth. When you start on a platform, like for instance, with audiobooks, with ACX or with Fiverr, you can get work without having all of those boxes checked off. But if you jump into pay to play sites, you're going to get beat up. And what's going to happen is you're going to think, oh gosh, I was, why did I even start? I, I, I don't have the talent. I was never meant to be, which is not the case. It's just, you jumped in too early. You didn't know what you were doing. You weren't ready. Yeah. I'm thinking that if you, if there were a job out there that somehow you conned yourself into that said you needed 15 years experience in XYZ and you got in there and you had half a, half a year's experience, you'd probably be in way over your head. Same thing is true here. Um, Adam is asking 
for you to reveal the exact name and number of the mic you mentioned for under 50 bucks from Amazon that will get you literally, right. Adam, this mic will take you all the way to $100,000 a year if you want to. So it's yeah. a great mic and it's called the Fifine. Is it KS? K670. Yeah. There you go. F -I -F -I -N -E. Yeah. And you know, I always put Amazon, you'll see it at amazon.com. Yep. That's where you get it. So that's the place. Daniel's asking, what should those cold call emails asking a production company if they're accepting demos look like? Well, there's a lot of different ways, but Bill, why don't you explain at least one of them? Well, here's the thing. Really, the punchline, that's what you're getting to. The only thing you need to worry about is asking, are you currently accepting demos? That everything leads to that. Everything else is fluff and you don't want to, in any kind of business communication, the less fluff, the better. So um, if, you've, if you have a background of any sort in voiceover, which most of you, I assume, don't, but if you do, you could mention that you say, I'm an experienced voiceover talent. Um, if, however, uh, you know, you, you may not have that, but you have a home studio and you could say, you know, I've got a home studio and I'm highly reliable. I mean, you could share attributes about yourself that would be helpful, but only in a couple of lines. You know, I'm, I'm really, I'm talking about one paragraph, a couple of sentences ending with, I'm writing to see if you are currently accepting demos. And then that's it. You're done. You're out of there. That's all you need to ask. Yeah, because regardless of your experience, regardless of your background, if they hear your demo and they don't like you, you're not the right person, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Joel says, I'm currently a member on Voices.com, auditioned regularly. What other sites would you recommend checking out for auditioning for more work? Well, Joel, I think... Uh, I don't know how what your what your closing ratio is on there. If you want to send it to us, how many auditions have you done and how many auditions have you landed? But probably you're putting the cart before the horse, so you yep. probably want to leave the major leagues till after you attack and become successful as a minor leaguer. But if you want to put in what your close ratio is, how many auditions you've had, how many jobs you've landed, that will help me figure that out a little bit better. Um, Joe says, to make great income, do you need to get out of the local market? Well, that's the big difference between now and years gone by, right, Bill, in terms of what is local and what is the other? The, the thought local market should never even enter your mind. There is no local market. Everything's local. It doesn't matter. You know, I sit in my little studio here in my basement out in the middle of a cornfield in Illinois. My clients are literally, literally all over the world. It doesn't matter. I've never marketed myself locally because there is no local everything is my backyard now because of the internet. So if you're limiting yourself to a geographical area, you're making a huge mistake. Fred, did I lose you? Sorry, I was muted there. So Michael's okay. question is, uh, how's Amazon's ACX service? Well, that's where you want to start is acx.com. And that's uh, to do to do uh, books for them, acx.com is a good place to go. Um, Henning, what language should one use You can who can speak a few fluently? Well, I'm in the same position. I speak both Spanish and Tagalog fluently where I grew up in the Philippines. And when Bill did my demo, uh, we put a few uh, little pieces in of both Spanish and Tagalog. But Bill, which language, if you have, if you're multilingual, should you concentrate on? Well, you want to focus on your native language, whatever that would be. And that, I mean, that's, that should be your bread and butter. But again, you're like, Fred, you're very fluent in multiple languages. So if you have that going for you, you should have demo material created um, as secondary supplemental material because you could probably snag a lot of other work as well. Eric's question is one we get, and we've heard this problem before. Can your mic be too good? Let me, let, let me tell you what he says after this, Bill. He goes, it's hard to get a quiet environment where I live. <laughs> My Rode NT1A seems to pick up everything, you know, with yeah. cheaper mics. In other words, exp you talk to us about both the mic and the environment you're working in. Yeah, you know, your audio is determined primarily by the quality of the space you're in, not the microphone you use. That's a big thing to take away tonight. It's your space, it's your room, it's not your microphone. Um, the more expensive the microphone, the more sensitive the microphone, as a general rule of thumb, so a lot of people, and that's why, man, I wish I could put everybody, you know, in my coaching group, because there's so many things that you just don't know when you jump in could save you so much time and effort and expense and hassle. Um, but I've heard this so many times, you know, I went out and I bought this microphone. It cost me hundreds or a thousand bucks. And yeah, now it picks up. It's, I hear everything. 
Yeah, because uh, you know a, a five hundred dollar or a thousand dollar mic is not the answer to your problem. The answer to your problem is a, is a good room and a, and a solid microphone. I mean, literally. I mean, you can work with a fifty dollar microphone and make a six figure income. Uh, there's nothing wrong with your microphone, by the way. It's just you need good treatment. You need good treatment. But remember, the more expensive the mic, usually the the better your room has to be. Here's a question I've seen twice now. Uh, how how much business are you getting from your LinkedIn connections, Erville? Yeah, I don't, I don't. I'm not aware of any work I've ever gotten from LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. So this isn't necessarily the kind of uh, business in which LinkedIn becomes your even one of your primary methods of marketing. Um, it Paul, hasn't for me. No. Yeah. Uh, Paul says I have 23 years of experience doing construction. Uh, specifically, we've had annual corporate video training on equipment and safety many times over the years. Is this a form of experience I can exploit in a specific niche? Now, again, Paul, you want to let the niche find you, but great, you'll be much better at at relating to and giving re, you know, reasonable copy, uh, a reasonable read on copy that's related to that field, right, Bill? Absolutely. I mean, yes, I would record demo material, you know, to show off the fact that you're very comfortable with the terminology and such. Okay, so Anthea says, uh, do you need more than a commercial pro demo in order to approach a video production company? Uh, I'm working on narration demo now, but it won't be done till November. Now remember, we have a theory, and Bill, you can explain it to folks within our group about what kinds of demos to do when and, and what to do in what order. Why don't you explain that? Yeah, uh, first of all, your, your commercial demo reigns supreme over, you can build a career around a commercial demo, but when you're first getting started, you really don't even have to have a pro demo. It used to be you really did. But nowadays, with all of the different platforms, with ACX and with Fiverr, which is a fantastic, I've got students making six figures just off Fiverr. You can get started with a DIY, do-it-yourself demo. And so, you know, I would get together a good, solid commercial DIY demo and I would put it up on Fiverr. I would create my own DIY audiobook demo, get it up on ACX. And then as you begin getting jobs and generating income, as a matter of fact, I started working with a student yesterday who through um, like uh, doing audiobooks, you know, he had saved up four or 5,000 bucks. He's been doing this for a few, few months now and he saved up the money from his jobs. And now he's paying me to produce a pro demo out of that out of that money. And with that pro demo, now he can market himself on bigger and more competitive platforms. So he went, you know, first the minor league route first, you know, he saved his money from his minor league income to then get into the major leagues with a pro demo, right? Exactly. Good. There's a ton more questions, but I think we probably have some information now that we want to cover and then we can maybe go back to some questions later, right? What's yeah, our next? Sounds good. Well, we've alluded to this voiceover blueprint program. Uh, you know, several years back, well, and I've been create, I've been doing training for what a decade now, I guess, give or take, Fred. And yep. um, a couple of years ago, decided that what I wanted to do was to create more of a university, a university approach to voiceover, where it'd be comprehensive, where you've got the, you know, the curriculum and the and the uh, the more formal training uh, presented, but that that you also have the class time where you're with the instructor and with other students who are learning, and you have the interaction and the back and forth. And you also get a chance to sit in and watch this being done live. So that's what the voiceover blueprint is. It's over 70 hours of training, which is on-demand streaming video, covering everything from, okay, how do I get my studio set up? How do I record audio and edit audio? How do I make my DIY demo? How do I get up on these websites? How do I market myself? What do I say to clients? I mean, it, it takes you from the very beginning all the way to more ad advanced marketing strategies. So it's, it's a lot of training, uh, but you're given a roadmap. You know, you begin with the 101 courses and you move on from there. But in addition to that, you have access to 15 hours of live group coaching per month using the GoToWebinar platform where we get together. As a matter of fact, we did a session earlier today um, with my students, this group. And we get together and the purpose today was primarily q a you have questions let's talk about it but also i coached students who wanted to read would read i give them feedback and help them out with their performance sometimes we do just marketing we talk marketing sometimes it's just about the fiverr platform because that's where most of our students start and my and my daughter is actually teaching that because she's making a lot of money on it she's very good uh, but we cover different topics and you have a chance to get feedback live feedback in addition to that, you're put into the, our private Facebook group. Now, this is a community of learners who are dedicated to each other's success. 
So there's a there's a place to go for instant feedback and community and which is all wonderful and good. So you've got that. But in addition to that, I stream live daily as I work for my studio. I think I didn't count them, Fred, but I think I have like I think I recorded I did eight projects today that I streamed live in Facebook. If you were actually counting and following along. So when I'm doing a job or I'm auditioning or I'm editing audio or I'm working on marketing or whatever, I turn on the camera and I stream live so that you can watch and see how I do. I did a session with a studio in Baltimore today, live, they directed me. So my students were able to watch that. And um, as it's being recorded, I'm sorry, as it's streaming live, it's also being recorded and it's archived. And so I've got, we're guessing maybe a few thousand hours worth of um, streaming video that I've done over the last few years. So you get to watch as I work. Now think about that for a second. I don't know of anybody who does that, who actually streams as they work. It's a chance not for me just to tell you what to do or to even answer your questions, but it's a chance for you to join me in the studio so I can show you how to do it in the, within the context of a professional voiceover operation. Commercials, promos, narration, training, directed sessions, editing audio, on and on I go. So that is what the voiceover, um, the blueprint consists of. Am I leaving anything out? I think, I think I've covered all the main bases there. I think you covered all the main bases, but it should be, we should remind people that, say for example, in the 15 hours of live group coaching, if for some reason you can't make it to one of the sessions, those also are recorded. So you can go oh, back yes. and them. So, and we've been doing that for a couple of years and those are all archived and accessible immediately. Yeah, if someone were to try and go through all the material we have available, um, they may have to spend 24-7 for the next year to get through it all. Again, this is university-level education for voiceover students, unlike anything else out there. It's to, to help ensure your success. Good. So now, again, not everybody, and, and again, we're going to be very, very upfront and honest with you. This is a program that you, you basically have to kind of apply to uh, and Bill. Uh, what I do, I, I take most of these calls and you, you schedule a call and I'll get on there with you. And, and the reason why it's me and not Bill is Bill's actually doing the work as opposed to a lot of people <laughs> who are talking to other people who can't do the work so they coach. Uh, Bill's doing the work. But I, I like to see people who have the understanding of a couple things. And I think it's really important that we po point these out. Number one is you have to have a very kind of long-term orientation, understanding that this, this business, especially if you start out doing it part-time, is a marathon and not a sprint. Um, it, it's not going to get you rich quick. If you want to do that, go buy lottery tickets. This is not the business for you. Um, and what else, Bill? I mean, it's long-term orientation. Also, the build in income is is exponential and can start out fairly slow but this year again i know you're a little bit kind of shy to share your numbers you're going to do close to four hundred thousand dollars this year in voice over business alone yeah right that's not voice over training that's voice over, that's actually recording voiceovers yeah right so it'll be close to four hundred thousand yeah, um, this, 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 i've done it for 13 years i mean i didn't start yesterday but i've always made money and I've always made more money the next year. You know, I mean, there's, there's never been a year where I've gone backwards. But on the flip side, we can also tell this story. There are people who start out doing seven to 10 hours, you know, a, a week, and they, they do it for three or four years until they retire. We have had people who in seven or eight months were making the equivalent of over $100,000 a month. Now, that's unusual, right. but year. it is possible. Right. Per year, I'm right. sorry. Yeah. And, Just want to make and, sure it clarified. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, Bill, if if we're painting the picture here for people who are teachers, as we know, teaching in general of any sort is one of the most underpaid professions on earth. And right. it's sad, but it's true. So I think that one of our missions is to try and change that, right? Yeah, and this is something that you have control over. I mean, you can't really control what you make as a teacher. I mean, you can, you know, you can get another master's degree and, you know, further your education and and, and get a bump in your income. Um, voiceover gives you opportunity to really leverage your background and your experience to exponentially go beyond what you've done previously. Yeah. So I think that for anybody, and again, I probably won't be able to get to all these calls. I'll get to a few of them again now here. But if you want to schedule a call to see if we have a good fit. There will be no arm twisting on this call. There will be no high pressure sales tactics. That's not what we do because we want to make sure that people who are in this program 
are successful, not that we, you know, it's got to be good for everybody before there's a match and before you get in. Right, Bill? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we're, we, we don't want your money. We want your success. We don't want your money without your success. Yeah, that's the exactly. best way to put it. Good. Um, about somebody asked the question about unions. Are you a union member? What about unions in this business? No, no, no. I am not, nor have I ever been, and and I have no plan. If I can make more money being union, uh, believe me, I'd be the first person to sign up. Uh, but uh, just to, the the brief explanation is that would really limit my opportunities. Being non-union leaves me, you know, the world is wide open to me. That would just limit me too severely. Uh, got it. Got it. Got it. Let me see here if I have it. Um, scripts but now this is a good question also because we get this a lot where do we find good scripts and are there bad scripts out there uh yeah there are, you know any website that says hey we've created these these scripts for voiceover talent run away from those those are usually not well written uh the best way to get a script is to get a real script and the best way to do that is to go to something like youtube or ispot.tv that has real commercials all you need to do is find a real commercial and transcribe it use those use real scripts not fake scripts and you always talk about people putting a diy demo together would they would do mm -hmm. that with various different scripts that they take down and transcribe and record themselves yes and in the training there's there's detailed explanation but that's that's what it breaks down to essentially is you're finding commercials online you're transcribing them and then recording okay well we finish up with a few here uh jeff's question is how do you receive payment for your work bill well, I invoice clients after the job is completed, and they're given the option to um, either pay via PayPal or check, whatever's most convenient for them. More and more clients are using PayPal these days. I'd say 75% of my clients pay using PayPal. And the follow-up question, of course, is the one we hear all the time is, well, how many times don't you get paid? Rarely. My collection rate uh, is like 99.7%. Um, you know, of those nearly four hundred thousand dollars I'll make this year, I will maybe not collect a couple hundred bucks. That's how, and that I teach you how to do that too. By the way, that's part of the training is how to collect and make sure you get your money. So, if you're a teacher and you're looking to either do a side gig, a side hustle, uh, voiceover might be a place to look. And again, schedule the call. If it's right, I'll tell you. If it's wrong, I'll tell you. Yeah, probably not a good match. Hey, Bill, thank you for your time tonight. I know your your voice is tired hey, from all the work. What, was it that noticeable? <laughs> no. I but only I mean, did about 10 jobs today. That's all. Yeah. So, folks, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks again. for being here. Yes. Thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it, and I look forward to hearing really from do. you if you think there's a good match possible. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.